Hey, servant is about work. And it's funny, when I have these sermons and I'm working with the Holy Spirit, oftentimes I have an idea what I'm going to talk about when I say the word work, and then God comes in and just rearranges it. And the way it happens is, is I'll start pulling out scriptures, and then I'll do something with the computer, and then before I know it, it doesn't get on the piece of paper. And I don't try and go back and put it on the piece of paper. I know that's God using his hand and telling me, you don't need that. That was you. That wasn't me. So I leave it out. And then it, it materializes. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life. This was, I believe, Paul speaking to the people. As Christians, we are called to lead a quiet life. To mind our own business. That means that we don't want to be busybodies, always in everyone else's business, telling them what they should and shouldn't do. When that happens, we just end up standing in judgment and telling them what our will is when they need to be encouraged and supported to find God's will in their life. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes. It takes some peace and some quiet, other people praying for you and support in order to do that. So we need to aspire to lead a quiet life, not trying to draw attention to ourselves so we can boast. To mind our own business and to work with our own hands. Key word, our own hands. We need to work. We do need to work. And we don't necessarily always need other people working for us. We need to work with our own hands as we companion you. That you may walk properly towards those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. This work that we do, this leading a quiet life of minding our own business, working and doing our own work, this is so when we walk towards others, in our evangelism or just in daily life. We can walk properly and not incorrectly and that we may lack nothing. And I think everyone in this congregation right now pretty much practices that. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 2 through 5. Now we do know Timothy, Timothy was sort of like the, Paul was his mentor and Timothy was his protege as we would say. For the time will come when they, people, will not endure sound doctrine. And I think this is what's happening. You know, uh, um, Angel had mentioned his mother-in-law, which was not the correct statement, but I'm not going to go into that. We talk about it. That's a whole nother topic, don't we? <laughs> but anyway, uh, she did not know God. Interesting because she is a Catholic. So she knows of God, but I understand what you were trying to say. She doesn't know God in a way that would allow her to be a certain person or conduct her business a certain way. But once again, they will not endure sound doctrine. And a lot of times, this is what happens with a lot of Christians. They're not enduring in what we would call sound doctrine. They've picked up a spin which has taken them in another direction, away from the will of the Lord away from that gentle, kind spirit that would not stand in judgment of anyone, that would not try to dictate policy to someone, that would be there to encourage someone. They stray away, but according to their own desires, their own will, their own flesh, because they have itching ears and they will heap up for themselves teachers when they get off track, they find teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth, listening to those teachers of unsound doctrine, and be turned aside to what they call fables, things that are not the truth, things that are not coming from God himself as we know it. I think a lot of people get confused with the Old Testament. Oftentimes people will pull out instances from the Old Testament. I think it's important that we all realize the Old Testament is there to show us what happens when man relies on himself. 
a lot of the struggles and, and sufferings and afflictions that were poured out upon other people by man or not necessarily the will of the Spirit, but man acting out his own desires, relying totally on himself. And we can see the type of destruction and chaos that comes from that. Yeah. But you be watchful in all things. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. Endure afflictions. There are going to be some people who do not know God, who are going to challenge us, who are going to frustrate us, who are going to be like an affliction, a sickness upon us. But we are told to be watchful in all things. When you're watchful, that means even though you don't agree with it, even though it doesn't seem right, you're still watchful to see what it is you're supposed to glean from whatever's happening. The Lord has a message there. And even though it may be irritating your flesh, annoying your spirit, be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. It doesn't say to always fix. It says endure. And do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. You know, Paul used to say he becomes all things for all people. If we're trying to catch fish, I don't know much about fishing, but I'm sure we all know a little bit. There's a certain bait that you have to put on the hook in order to catch the fish you're trying to catch. So if you're out fishing, make sure you have the right bait. And you're not using the wrong bait. Because if you're using the wrong bait and the wrong fishing rod and the wrong technique, you're not going to catch that fish. You're not catching a shark. Exactly. <laughs> you may not catch anything. And like you said, you may want to catch some trout and you're going fishing for a shark. <laughs> so be watchful. Endure. Do the work of an evangelist, but don't waste your effort, you know? Go where you know your message will be heard. And, will, and when you go there, go there in a way where the people can relate to you. You know, try to find something in common with them. You know, you can, in order to, if I'm going to work with a patient, you know, it, here's an interesting thing I learned the other day, and it's so true. People will listen to what you say. People will see what you do with your actions. But they remember you by how you make them feel. That's right. That's right. That's how they remember you. They may be making you feel one way, and you're responding to that feeling. And you're making them feel some kind of way. And that's why they're responding to that feeling. So as an evangelist, as a minister, we have to get in their shoes, in their skin, and try and understand how we're making them feel. And when we do that, we can then work through that. And we can change. We can turn the other cheek. That's what turning the other cheek is a lot of times. We're right. We know we're right. They're wrong. But we're trying to reach them. So now we turn the other cheek and we take the extra effort to meet them where they are. And in some instances, that means giving them what they want. Letting them see the Christ in us. Because we know God. We know Christ. Good point. What would Jesus have done in this situation? Never forget to ask yourself that. James 1.25 But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it 
is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. That's the work of God. The law of liberty is that the battle has already been fought for us. We don't have to try to follow the rules and rely on ourselves to follow the rules. People who do that are forgetful hearers, but not doers of the work. Because if we are free and we can look into that perfect law of liberty and that freedom, we will have the spirit inside of us and we will allow the spirit to work through us. We will not rely on our own strength, our own power, our own desire. And this is the one who will be blessed in what he does. And that's the key word there. So if you want to receive the blessings, stop doing what you think needs to be done. Stop trying to follow the rules. Stop trying to rely on your flesh. And be the doer of the work. And the work is allowing the spirit to lead you and not be led by your own flesh. That is the work. That is the work that will allow us to receive the blessings. Revelation 22, verse 12 and 13. And behold, I am coming quickly. God's time. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. What is that work? Not relying on our flesh, not trying to use our own will to follow the rules. We can look at the rules and get an idea if we are in the spirit. Because if we're in the spirit, we will be for the most part following those rules. We will be gentle. We will be minding our own business. We will be leading by example. We will be focusing on how we make people feel. We will be treating people like we would want to be treated. We will not necessarily be responding to what they do to us, but we will be turning the other cheek and being good fishermen and using the proper thing. For I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. And that's why we do it. Because God is the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. And to Him be all the praise, honor, and glory. To Him and His Spirit, His will be done. Hallelujah. The church will grow Hallelujah. because of God's promise to us. Hallelujah. It will happen in his time. Hallelujah. He will send the people that we need in order for the church to grow. Amen. We need to stay faithful. Amen. We need to continue what we're doing. We need to always be called upon and follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to continue to do all the things we're doing. And his will be done. Amen. Amen.